Hi friends, I'm uh, Bishop Don Chris of the Southeast Michigan Synod and what I want to do uh, at this point is share with you um, both the scripture and uh, some of my thoughts uh, for the assigned text for this third Sunday of Easter. Um, we're getting good at this uh, remote gathering thing uh, to be together separately. And um, one of the ways that we're doing this is by reaching out to you remotely, by preparing videos that your pastors uh, can share with you or that you can simply access through the Synod website. So, so glad to be able to be with you in this, uh, in this way and so much I wish that we were able to be together uh, in person. Not yet, but God willing, uh, soon, someday soon. Um, I want to also um, be sure to say a word of thanks to uh, my staff who have worked so hard during this time. I want to say thanks to your pastors and leaders who are learning extraordinary things about how to proclaim the gospel in this extraordinary time. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness, for your commitment to being part of the body of Christ, even as we gather, for your uh, generosity, for your pushing forward with your giving, uh, even as you are uncertain, perhaps, about what your economic uh, situation is, but so grateful for that and, and, and want to know that all the dollars that you send are so important to us. So thank you very, very much. So. Let me read the gospel, and then I'll offer some uh, thoughts about it. Um, and this is, interestingly, uh, the gospel that you may have read uh, if you did that part of the Easter day evening uh, worship together around the table. So, the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, this is the 24th chapter. Now, on that same day, this is referring to Easter Sunday, now, on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and elders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Now, when they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how they had been how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Hello, sisters and brothers. That's a story that we know so well. It's a story that we heard again on Easter evening, perhaps. And so much of that rings true for us now, doesn't it? That story is told in a time of uncertainty and separation and deep anxiety. The disciples understood the way that their lives were going to unfold. They understood the way that the world was going to keep moving forward. And they understood that Jesus was at the center of their lives and their hopes. And then everything changed. Jesus was no longer there. The world had shifted. Their lives were changed and they were uncertain about what to do next. And so two of them that evening on the road talked about their hopes, their fears, their expectations, everything that they had wished for that Jesus had promised. And in the midst of that conversation, they're joined by that third person. And scripture says, interestingly, that their eyes were kept from recognizing him. But as they go along, they talk. And the two of them, initially on the road, lay open their hearts. They share their hopes, their dreams. And Jesus teaches them. He opens, beginning with Moses, he opens the scriptures to them and shares all of the hopes and dreams of the prophets and God's faithful people throughout the history of God's relationship with them. And we learn that their hearts were burning within them as this teaching is shared with them. The road comes to an end. This seems that the lesson has come to an end too. The man looks as though he's going forward. They say, wait, stop. You have been together with us. The day is almost over. Come and break bread with us. And he does. Taking a place at the head of the table, he does these familiar gestures that they had thought never to see again. He takes the bread. He blesses and breaks and he gives it to them. And then Luke says, their eyes were open and immediately thereafter, Jesus disappears. Well, what would you do? What do we do in this time of anxiety and uncertainty, this time of separation and, and deep, deep concern for each other, for each other's health, for each other's livelihood, for the hopes that we had shared and, and, and stewarded so carefully for the future? Well, I think part of the point of this story shared for this third Sunday of Easter, yes, it's still Easter, sisters and brothers, is the lesson sometimes is that we need to go back to the beginning, to remember the stories that shaped and formed us, the stories that we treasure in our hearts, that we hold in our minds, the stories that come with the deep and profound memories that the first time we heard them, of the hundredth time we heard them, the folks that shared them with us and the folks with whom we have shared the stories. And then there is the meal, the bread, and the revelation of the risen Christ. We're not there yet in this time of separation and distance, and that's okay, because what we hear so clearly in this story is that Christ is revealed in the scriptures, in the stories, and the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, their hearts are burning as they remember these stories, as they, as they remember their hopes the story that has shaped their lives, that shaped their families' lives, the, short, the stories that have given their lives, their hearts, meaning. And so what they do is after Jesus is revealed, they probably finish the meal, and then they run back to Jerusalem. Maybe not run, but walk really fast and find to their astonishment that Jesus has already revealed himself to Simon, but that the eleven and their companions are gathered and sharing this astonishing good news. For Christ is risen, dear friends. 
He is risen indeed. And we cling to that good news as we cling to our hopes, as we cling to these stories, as we cling to our identity as the body of the risen Christ in this world. Amen.